The second part of our scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. It will seem like all hell has broken loose. Sun, moon, stars, earth, sea, in an uproar. And everyone all over the world in a panic. The wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom. The powers that be quaking. And then, then, they'll see the Son of Man welcomed in grand style. A glorious welcome. When all this starts to happen, up on your feet. Stand tall with your heads high. Help is on the way. He told them a story. Look at a fig tree, any tree for that matter. When the leaves begin to show, one look tells you that summer is right around the corner. The same here. When you see these things happen, you know God's kingdom is about here. Don't brush this off. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for this one too. These things will happen. Sky and earth will wear out. My words won't wear out. But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise, spring on you suddenly like a trap, for it's going to come on everyone, everywhere, at once. So whatever you do, don't go to sleep with the switch. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. Friends, please pray with me. Holy One, we pray that you will speak your word into our hearts this day in your scriptures, in our songs, in the words we speak, the words we hear, and in the times of silence. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As you can see from the slide up there, I'm speaking only briefly to you this morning because our moderator, the Right Reverend Richard Bott, has uh, put out an Advent video message and we definitely want to hear that. So I'll just share a few words with you because we heard quite the scripture reading uh, that, that Judy read for us today. Very, and we heard it from a, a translation or a, a paraphrase from the message. So it had particular impact, I found. And I liked that version of it because when I read that, I thought, oh yeah, like this could have been written yesterday or today. Starts off with, it'll seem like all hell has broken loose. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I am listening to the news, that is exactly the feeling that I have, like all hell is breaking loose and talked about the, the sun and the moon and the stars and the, and the seas and everything, like everything sort of in chaos and falling apart so that it knocks the breath out of us. And I know a little bit of what that's like. Over the last number of years, I've had many people in our church, indigenous and racialized people, sharing their stories of their experience in this united church of ours that I love so much and their experiences in our church have sometimes knocked the breath right out of me. And it, it feels sometimes like this church that I have known and, and the reality that I live in, the way I see things, is just like falling apart when I hear their experiences, things that people who don't live with the kind of privilege I live with, how they experience life in our world and in our church. The, the sort of apocalyptic language of Luke that sort of lays out this horrific world-ending devastation actually resonates a lot with my experiences when I look at and listen to the world and the stories that are shared. So I just wanted to, to dive into that apocalyptic text a little bit with you, because it's an interesting thing about Advent. It always starts with an apocalyptic text, an odd thing to do on the Sunday of hope. Always there's some like, the world's coming to an end, 
right? So let's just look at that. Because apocalyptic texts, there's a few of them throughout the Bible, and then, of course, it ends with a big apocalyptic text with Revelation, right? And we tend to sort of shy away from those a bit because it's hard to understand them. But uh, in summary, apocalyptic texts do three things. The first is that they tell us the way things are, the un edited version. They, they intentionally rip away the veil through which we look at reality, particularly those of us who live with a lot of privilege. We tend to see reality through the veil of our own privilege, and it makes invisible much of the reality that people who don't have that kind of privilege experience. And so those texts, they just rip it away, and they say, this is what it looks like. This is what's going on, folks. And then the second thing they do is they say, this is not how God intends it to be. Th this, isn't, this isn't the end point. And not only that, but, but God hasn't given up on us, despite the fact that we've gone seriously off the mark. God is still at work right now, in this moment, bringing something new to birth, trying to get us back to what God intends. And then the third thing they say is keep your eyes open. Stay awake, stay alert, watch for it, because you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss what God is doing here. And when you see it, you have a choice to make. Which reality do you want to be part of? Every Advent starts with a text like this, because Advent is that time where we're preparing ourselves to, to open ourselves up for that coming. That, that's what it means. It means coming. It means the new thing coming. That's what Advent means. And we're preparing ourselves for that new thing God is trying to do among us right now, and we don't want to miss it. Now, Advent is this not just the future coming. It's not just any old future coming. There's the future, which is the the logical progression of reality as is. Like if we just sort of stayed on the path we're on and kept going, we would get to the future. That's, that's that part one of those apocalyptic texts. Like the path we're on, folks, here's where that one goes, the texts say. Advent is a future that is not continuous with the path we're currently on. It's the future that comes in over here that says there is an alternative. And God's trying to make it happen among us. Keep your eyes open for it and get on board with it. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the, where you're heading. But there is an alternative. So friends, we're in Advent. We're in that time where we try to remind ourselves every year God is always among us trying to bring to birth God's vision for our world. And when we can see clearly where we are and how far it is from that vision, then we can keep our eyes and ears and hearts and minds open to perceive where God is bringing this new thing to birth. And then, friends, we got a choice. We can just carry on the way we're going, or we can get on board the Advent train. May God grant us wisdom in that choice. And now we're going to hear from the Right Reverend Richard Bott on Advent. Grace and peace to you, in Jesus' name. This is one of the times of the year that I have a lot of fun in congregational ministry. I call it the Advent, oh no, where did we put it preparation time. This is the moment when the worship committee or the United Church Women Leadership or the facilitator for the children's ministry or someone else pokes their head in my door and says, Richard, have you seen the Advent wreath? or the wall hanging, or the creche, or another of the Advent accoutrements. I'm sure it was put away properly at Christmas last year, but I can't find it. 
Sometimes it's because it didn't get put away exactly in the changeover from Advent to Christmas. But often, it's because things have gotten moved during all of the changes and shifts and congregational living that happened during the year. So we go searching. Often we find what we're searching for. Sometimes we don't. And we need to make a decision. Is it something we need? If so, is it something that should be purchased or is it something that someone in the congregation would be willing to make? Is it something that we'll forego this year but work on having ready for next year? Then there are times when there's something new that's found and we wonder how it can be shared how it will fit into our Christmas traditions. In many congregations, colors change as the cycle of the liturgical year goes on. Green for ordinary time, orange for creation, purple for Lent, white or gold for Easter, and so on. Advent is interesting. Many communities of faith choose blue as the color for Advent. I think that's wonderful. I grew up in a part of the church that used purple as the Advent color. Not the deep purple of Lent, but a lighter purple, a gentle purple. What I love about the purple is that it connects the two seasons together. Both of them are times for telling the journey stories of Jesus. In Lent, his final journey to Jerusalem, to the cross and beyond. In Advent, his first journey, from conception to birth to his beginning. Historically, both seasons have been considered penitential seasons. Times for followers of Jesus to take a look at their lives, to recognize the places where how they're living their lives has shifted in ways that aren't aligned with Christ's call for them. And times to reset and rebalance our lives. I really appreciate the fact that the liturgical year invites me to do this more than once. Like a car driving over constantly bumpy roads, I need to be rebalanced on a regular basis. So I'd like to invite you to unwrap the gift of Advent with me this year, to join me in rebalancing. Would you be willing to set aside six minutes each day between now and Christmas? If you would, consider trying this. Find a quiet spot in which you can sit comfortably. You might want to light a candle or turn on one of those battery-powered ones if open flame is unwise where you are. Then, just breathe. Seriously. For five minutes, just sit and breathe. As you breathe in, consider saying in your head, Here I am, your beloved child. Then, when you're breathing out, consider saying, what do I need to learn? At the end of those five minutes, get up and go on with your day. And then, at the end of the day, take that one minute you've got left in the practice and ask yourself the question, what did God teach me today? It may be that nothing jumps out at you. It may be that you have an aha moment. Whatever the case, keep breathing. Be open to the possibilities that God is giving you as our Christmas celebrations draw near. Oh, and if you'd like to share some of your insights, consider sharing them on social media with the hashtags UCCAN and Rebalance. If you're not on social media, or even if you are, why not partner up with someone else who is willing to try this? Get together for a beverage and some conversation. Or maybe just sit together. May your Advent be fruitful and your Christmas be filled with joy and wonder. Christ's peace to you. Friends, as you go out into this week, go with Advent eyes. Go with hearts expecting to find God out in the world. And go with the blessing of God who is the giver of all life. Christ who is as close as your own heartbeat. And of the Holy Spirit who binds you to each and every other. Amen. <laughs>